Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. 56-year-old male patient came to ER with alleged history of trauma. That is, he was accidentally hit his right foot with toe over a hard surface. Followed by patient complete severe pain and black discoloration within half an hour came to our ER. Initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented, airway was patent. Uh, breathing part, saturation 19. So, straight away go to the local examination. On disability, there is uh, tenderness over the right big toe tip area. Mm. Discoloration will be, discoloration is there. Uh, less than 20 percent discoloration. Range of movement is normal. Pain score 7 by 10. We give injection uh, PCM. So. Then in adjuvant to uh, primary survey, we take an x-ray uh, right foot AP oblique to rule out any fractures there. Uh, then this uh, normally uh, the treatment for this we first impression we give diagnosis of uh, subangle hematoma because patient had this discoloration followed by a trauma a subangle hematoma of the uh, right foot big toe mm. uh, in subangle hematoma there is patient uh, you can aspirate the hematoma if there is indicated mm. that uh, if a patient came to ER with an acute onset within 24 to 48 hours or if there is it was not uh, uh, spontaneously bleeding out or the nail blood or nail plate was intact uh, then patient coming at ac acutely presentation. Now before we uh, aspirate this uh, subangle. Okay. So just uh, before that uh we had a patient who had come with an history of trauma to the big toe. Big toe. And it was a direct impact and on yes. examination, there was a subbungal hematoma. Yes. And you have taken an x-ray yes. to rule out fractures. Yes. So, these are two common associations. So, when you do local examination, what are the key things that you wanted to consider? Percentage of involvement. You mm -hmm. said some 20, 25 20 percentage percent is only involved initially. The next thing is whether the nail bed is intact. intact whether uh, there are like the treatment options varies. So, when still the nail bed is also removed and the nail is avulsed, that is the next question that you should have in your mind. If nail is avulsed, there is no point in doing in all your turfination, you need to remove the remove nail. nail. So, avulsed nail, you need to remove it and uh, the question comes next is, what whether there is no fracture or with fracture. There is a subangal hematoma with fracture, mm -hmm. there is a subangal hematoma without with a fracture. fracture. Avulsion, we have already said what needed to be done. So, without avulsion, either fracture or without a fracture these are the two possibilities so the most key thing it is pain management mm -hmm. so uh, majority of the time your paracetamol initially it will take care maybe also it's always a best practice before you start examining the big toe to give a local anesthesia so digital block mm -hmm. it is always preferably you do that way so one more thing that you need to do at the examination maybe not a fracture maybe it can be a tendon injury also there is a possibility so you need to compare by looking into the other toe which is not injured and you need to look for the extension mm -hmm. of yeah. the distant phalangeal joint that's what you need to look in for so if there is a distension uh, so there is extension is not possible you need to call it as a mallet finger mm -hmm. so even if in the hand or in the big toe so that is extension you need to look in for so tendon injury is one thing that you need to give especially in the hand we are discussing for the big toe but hand also we need to this can happen and uh, Digital block is the most important thing that you need to practice before because it's pretty painful because uh, actually 48 to 78 hours also it will be painful. So especially in kids and all when you are planning to examine they will not allow you to touch that area. So maybe a small local anesthesia if you are able to give a digital block. What is the key thing that you need to look in when you are going for a digital block? Digital block we give only plain lidocaine. That is the key thing. This is an endartery. So endartery. only plain uh, lignocaine is what you need to do. And give a lignocaine and you start examining. This holds true for all your distal hand injuries and all. If possible, you go ahead and give a local anesthesia. Only thing is that you need to document your neurological deficit before mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Whether there is any neural sensation as well as motor. Mm -hmm. So, paresthesia, numbness, all the special tests, whatever you wanted to perform to look in for a nerve injury, you need to do that. And then you can go ahead with a wrist block also. If it's in the hand, mm -hmm. you can even think of a wrist block also. If uh, the whole hand is also injured and there is another subangal hematoma. See, this, this trauma can be a direct impact mm -hmm. or it can be part of another trauma. There is, he had fallen down on his hand and there is a laceration here and there is a subangal hematoma. Mm -hmm. This also we will have. So potentially you need to remember that you need to give good pain relief for this group of patients. IV analysis is okay, but locally you can go ahead with it. If only the digit is involved, you have got a digital nerve block. 
So how will you do a digital nerve block? Uh, digital nerve block uh, before going. To One uh, thing you said <coughs> plain lignin, okay. Plain lignin, okay. Not with adrenaline. Not with adrenaline. Right. Two, two, uh, three to four ml, one percent of lidocaine. Uh, we plan to give be, uh, between the web space of finger to dorsal nerve going through the uh, web space. Uh, then before that we will clean with powder and iodine to prevent an infection. Uh, then we take lidocaine in a five ml uh, syringe. Then we uh, subcutaneously we enter the plane. Then for First of all, we aspirate. There is no blood is coming. Confirm that. Then we give uh, push, and then proximally we insert the needle. Around uh, two to three ml is what is mostly required. But we usually take will three to five ml. What we take one percent of lignocan. And before that, <coughs> what is the important question? You should ask for lignocan allergy. Mm. So some patient can have lignocan allergy. So. Uh, what is the uh, thing that you should be having? Lignocan allergy. Some inadvertently you have given this lignocan as an IV. What you will do? Inadvertently you are giving a wrist block, mm -hmm. and suddenly the uh, you have given into an uh, artery or into the vein. Mm -hmm. So what you will do? Intralipid emulsion. Dosage of intralipid emulsion. One point five ml per one point five milligram per kilogram body weight. So just remember. When you are planning for all this block, you should have an intralipid emulsion available in the ED. You should not be looking for during that time. Uh, like where is the lip, in lip, lipid emulsion, where is the lipid emulsion, you should not run behind that. It should be available in the ED. So when you are using a lot of blocks, intralipid emulsion should be available. Specifically when you are doing this fascia iliaca block and all, you need larger amount of local anesthetic. So larger amount of local anesthetic when you are giving and the suddenly the patient is coming of paresthesia and and arrhythmias, all those things can develop. <laughs> so that time you should not think for having an intralipid dimension. So stock it in your ED and make sure that it is available whenever it is required and uh, you need to think of intralipid dimension. That is what I hold for any but digital nerve block and all uh, causing an uh, toxicity is very very rare but mostly you should ask for an allergy mm -hmm. uh, for lignocaine. There are group of patients they are allergy for anything. So in that it will be an ideal. You can give a small uh, sub Q uh, intradermal or not sub Q yes. intradermal test dose for lignocaine, and you can try. There are group of patients who are going for uh, surgeries and all who is having this frequent allergies. They will come to us whether can I take this. So what we do, we'll give a small intradermal and see whether they are uh, allergic to that. So. Uh, lignocan allergy has to be asked very rarely but yes you need to ask for lignocan allergy also then you go ahead as you said in the dorsal uh, spaces in the web space is the wherever the digital nerve is there that's what how long you need to wait uh, take one or two minutes for action one for one or ideally it should wait for another three to five minutes that will be ideal uh, three to five minutes you can just wait anyway you have given a local so uh, don't jump and start examining you just wait for another three to five minutes for the local to act mm -hmm. Uh, because the maximum effect, what the uh, well, things that we did wrongly is this thing. No, after just one minute we will start doing, but the patient will still be in pain. So just wait for another three to five minutes. Uh, let it act very well, and then you go ahead and examine or whatever uh, procedure that you want to do. Go ahead and do that. Now coming back to subagan hematoma. So subagan hematoma, you have uh, uh, defined that. Uh, okay, this patient needs uh, the drainage because that when you without letting out the blood, the patient will have significant pain. So, what are the options for you in the ED to doing a turfination, needle turfination? What are the options? Uh, we can do electrocautrain carbon dioxide laser aspiration mm -hmm. <coughs> with, an, with an insulin syringe. We can aspirate out, and other with, we can use 18 gauge, uh, 23 gauge needle with uh, 23 gauge 18 gauge needle. Maybe for kids, I will say. Maybe for a larger uh, adult and all, you need little bit larger size. I'll prefer <coughs> using an 18 gauge at least. Then only the blood will come out. So you need to make a hole in the nail bed mm -hmm. and we need to let out the blood. So you, I ideally prefer it will be an 18 gauge, maybe mm -hmm. smaller gauge, maybe you can use it for the kids. If you have electric artery well and good in the ED, you can just do with the electric artery. So the whole blood might not come out initially, but you need to use some needle to aspirate. As you mm -hmm. said, you are using an insulin syringe to aspirate or maybe the small capillary uh, capillary tubes will be available to mm -hmm. you can put that and you can aspirate that also so that is the thing that you need to do when you are caught or 18 gauge needle how will you do that you will make a small hole what you have done for this patient uh, this patient we use a 18 gauge needle ah. uh, then using a hot flame we red hot the needle then we gently press the center of the uh, hematoma uh, then just insert it uh, as soon as we stop the uh, needle insertion when the blood comes out so when that giveaway feel you should stop it otherwise you will go and you are going nail further bed. and causing Pain. damage to the nail, nail bed. bed so that should not happen so once the blood has come out you stop it and let the blood come out freely so some 
that you know, mm. sometimes if uh, there is larger area is affected we can uh, give multiple. multiple otherwise because the blood get clotted and there is chance of reaccumulation of blood and again patient of severe pain so pain. multiple in this patient less than 20 percentage only single uh, this is we need okay then uh, then before going to this uh, aspiration we can uh, differentiate this is subangle hematoma because similar appearance condition will be there like glomus tumor subangle nevus junctional nevus subangle melanoma so before going to differentiate that things so usually we do this only for traumatic one right. that's why it is important there is a trauma history and this is sudden onset rest and all we will never touch mm-hmm. it's not our job let them go to the dermatologist for the evaluation of that but if it's a traumatic one yes we can do this way so it's usually done in the ed as a simple procedure but only thing avulsion you have avulsion then it's better to remove mm-hmm. the avuls uh, this thing also but there are studies that even if you keep it there by doing in uh, this thing there is no much of a difference but if it is an avuls uh, but cosmetic indications mostly mm-hmm. some people will not agree for a turfination mm-hmm. to form uh, they wanted their nail to look very beautiful and also that is a problem cosmetic implications might be there so that time then you have to think about uh, all those things then uh, what they can do at home can they do this at home Mm-hmm. can you you develop a sambagal hematoma will you uh, do this at home yes you can yeah. be done i have done personally for it me uh, because i had a bad sambagal hematoma i just used a paper clip and i just uh, showed in the g- gas cooker uh, sorry so the gas and just made it in the hot flame and uh, i personally used this it works also so we technically don't recommend uh, this to be done by the patient but uh, if you are a paramedic or a, uh, you have an somebody at home you can you are able to do this under sterile precautions it can be done you can take a small paper clip if you don't get an 18 gauge suppose you are in a peripheral setup you don't have any needles uh, you are just in a camp site so you are not carried anything a patient is coming with an subangle hematoma just a paper clip paper clip, paper clip you can just take and take it straight and Uh, show it in the hot flame and the same it will work mm-hmm. it worked for me uh, and uh, the only problem is that uh, the pain might be there if you are not able to do this because you are not going to give uh, a block and all at home so that is what then what advice you will give uh, normally before subangle hematoma drainage we can take uh, informed consent and we explain the condition because there is discussion will be there up to the 4 weeks and there is uh, sometime we need to uh, nail removal because of the primary injury and there is chance for reaccumulation because of the plug formation and secondary infection and uh, in prophylactic antibiotic basically uh, if if there is uh, clean injury with there is no any uh, fracture there is no need for any prophylactic antibiotic but the patient with comorbidities and immune suppression we give prophylactic antibiotic okay and uh, so routinely for a t- subangle hematoma nothing is nothing needed is needed. nothing is needed if you drain it out that is more than enough or uh, even if he is a diabetic he is coming and telling is a diabetic preferably there is no open injury it is not contaminated or anything you can just send him after removal of the blood but when the blood is getting accumulated it can get infected mm-hmm. so when that situation if you are not draining it or you have done some manipulations you are removing some cutting and all those things some manipulation you have done to the wound and there is a chance that it was contaminated before maybe that time plus or minus antibiotic is only required maybe local cleaning dressing with prodon iodine will be more than enough mm-hmm. so systemic antibiotics routinely not required unless and until it's very much contaminated and there is a significant crush injury and all mm-hmm. uh, there is another indication to give antibiotic we can give otherwise routinely not needed for the subangle hematoma as such and regarding uh, dressing you need to give any dressing to the subangle hematoma uh, clean and dry the area area the and maybe after 48 hours they can just reassess mm-hmm. if there is any reaccumulation anything has happened and only this thing should be ideal within 48 hours mm-hmm. somebody is coming like 3 days back i had an injury i need to move it will not work. work so that is a one another thing within 48 hours if the patient is coming here to you Truth with an injury you can have for this turfination otherwise you don't think because after 48 hours it would have clotted and uh, there is no way that the blood is going to come out and uh, so don't try if it is after 48, 48 hours. hours and uh, another important thing there is an associated fracture mm-hmm. so remember regarding no, splinting the limb four weeks immobilization is required if there is an associated fracture if there is uh, more than 50 percentage of hematoma is there then it is warrant means it take radiograph to rule out any fracture fracture when uh, other thing is sir uh, we when we use cleaning the before refination use only betadine or powdered iodine don't use isopropyl alcohol because there is a chance of flame over if they use yeah it is there is a you are using the flame and mm-hmm. keeping this technically yes but uh, by the time you are going to the flame and bringing that by the yeah, time it will have your price so uh, that's when you say f- chemistry wise yes yeah. but uh, when you look into practical aspect it might not occur yeah, that's true okay when this patient was done and he was discharged oh yes okay.
so it's a simple procedure uh, but you should know how to do this but uh, one two three points that i will say do not miss a fracture mm -hmm. second thing preferably give a digital nerve block and look for whether there is avulsion is there whether you wanted to assess the nail bed injury you want to remove the uh, cosmetic implication plus or minus that method of turfination preferably larger size needle for kids smaller size needle that's what you need to remember and a small follow up not requiring any antibiotic pain management is the key and only do if it is less than 48 hours duration fine thank you